Father John is going to tell us the story of Saul today. Yay! Haha, <laughs> you're so excited, Matthew. Yes, he is going to tell us the story of Saul, the first king of Israel. Let's sit here and wait for Father. There he comes. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Good evening, everyone. So, children, which story did I tell you yesterday? You told us the story of Prophet Samuel. All right. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of Saul. Are you ready? Yes, Father. We are. Saul was anointed as the king at a very critical moment in the history of Israel. Philistines were very powerful and they were taking away the land that God had promised Israelites. The very existence of Israel was threatened. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then, you shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. In the hill country of Judea, there was a little town called Gaibe. In that town lived a man named Kish who belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. One day, some of his donkeys got lost. He sent his son, Saul, along with a servant in search of the donkeys. This happened a few days after Samuel promised the Israelites that he would give them a king. <sighs> I am tired. Let's search for some more time. Master, forget the donkeys. Let's return back home. They must be worried thinking about us. Won't it be a shame to return empty-handed? I've heard that there is a prophet around here. Let's go and talk to him. Yes, master. Come, maybe he can help us in finding the donkeys. Hey, look, there's someone there. Let's go and ask him. Hey, hello, sir. Yes, how can I help you? Sir, we heard that there is a prophet around here. Do you know him? Oh, did you mean the prophet Samuel? Yes. He is in town. You may find him on top of this mountain. Thank you, sir. Come, let's get to the top of this mountain. Have we reached, Master? <sighs> yes, we have reached the top. Oh, there's someone over there. Let's go and ask him. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Could you please help us find Prophet Samuel? We are coming from Gaibe. I am Samuel. Did you? Did you just say that you are coming from Gaibe? Yes, we are from Gaibe. And is your name Saul? Whoa! Yes, my name is Saul. But how did you know? God, it's like you told me in my vision. Thank you, God. Master, we come in search for our donkeys. 
they were lost a few days back. Don't worry about the donkeys anymore. They have been found. Come with me. You can stay with me tonight. Yes, master. Samuel had a vision about Saul the night before. And when he saw Saul, he knew that he was the chosen one by God to be the king of Israel. Saul stayed with Samuel that night and they were about to return back home the next morning. Saul, Saul, wait there. Yes, master. Saul, I want to show you something. Tell your servant to go on without us. You go ahead. I'll join you in some time. What is it, master? Why did you want me to stay? Kneel down, Saul. Yes, master. Saul, God has anointed you to be the king of Israel. You will save God's people from their enemies. Master, I, I don't think I'm worthy. I come from a humble family. It doesn't matter. You will know it's true because on your way, you will find three men. Huh? One of them will be carrying three lambs. The second will be carrying three loaves of bread. And the third will be carrying a wineskin with him. And as you reach Mount Gaibe, the prophets will come out playing music and they will be chanting. The Spirit of the Lord will seize you at that moment. What? What am I supposed to do then? Don't worry. Do what you may at that moment. Like Samuel had foretold, Saul met with the men on his way. And when he reached Mount Gaibe, he saw the prophets coming down chanting and playing music. Ah, it's just like he told me. And now the prophets too. When Saul saw the prophets, the Spirit of the Lord came over him and he was transformed into a new man. Hallelujah! 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 Hey! Hey, isn't he the son of Kish? Yes, he is. But what happened to him? I think the Spirit of Lord has come over him. Is Paul one of the prophets too? Looks like he's one too. Hallelujah! The people of Israel gathered at Mount Mizbah as Samuel had directed them. They were waiting eagerly to meet their new king. People of Israel, you have elected Saul, son of Kish from the tribe of Benjamin as your king. Saul, son of Kish, long live the king, long live the king. Saul, God has chosen you to protect Israelites from the enemy. You should always remember to be just and kind and be like a father to them. I will, Master. You should also care for the poor and you should not accumulate wealth. Do not build palaces for your own use. I will never forget your words, Master. I will never forget what you have done for me. Thank you so much. After Saul was anointed as the king, he returned home and started working in the field as usual. After about a month, two men came to meet him. My king? Huh? Who are you? We are coming from the north, from a town called Jabesh Gilead. What do you want? Why have you come here? My king, the Ammonites have surrounded our town. We surrendered and begged for a treaty, and they agreed. 
If they have agreed to your treaty, then why have you come here? My lord, they are crazy people. Do you want to know the terms of the treaty? Hmm. They want to pluck out the right eye of all our residents. Huh? And we have got only seven days to give them an answer. If we don't agree, then they will attack the town and kill everyone. Is that so? Hmm. Please save us, my lord. We have got nowhere else to go. Don't worry. I will take care of this. You can return to your town now. God will look after you. Thanks, my lord. Saul assembled a huge army by threatening the people of Israel. And a huge crowd came to march with him. Listen, everyone. Jabesh Gilead is under siege. And the Ammonites are going to kill everyone in town. We must attack them and protect our people. Yay! Yay! Get ready to attack as soon as you hear the trumpet blowing. Yeah! yeah! Attack! attack! Under the leadership of Saul, the Israelites attacked the Ammonites and they won the war in a very short time. Ha 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 ha! We have won! Long live King Saul! Praise the Lord who gave us a king! We now have a king! Nobody will dare to attack us now! <laughs> Where is my son? Jonathan! Jonathan! Where are you, Jonathan? I'm here, father. Put me down, please. Why did he call me, father? Jonathan, I need you to go to Gilgal for a sacrifice. I want you to move to Gaibe with a thousand men. The rest of the army will come with me to Gilgal. Gaibe, but you know that the Philistine fortress is on the way. What if they attack? Then you must take a different route. After my sacrifice at Gilgal, I'll come and join you. All right, father. I will do as you have told me. You take care, my son. Saul arrived in Gilgal and waited for Samuel to arrive to begin the sacrifice. Saul's son Jonathan had reached Gaibe. Master, we have been waiting for seven days. Can't we offer the sacrifice and continue with our journey? No, it must be Prophet Samuel who is offering the sacrifice. Lord, Lord, huh? Who is it? <sighs> Who are you? My lord, I was in Gaibe with your son. And... And... And what? What happened? And the Philistines attacked us. Huh? Is my son alright? Tell me. Is Jonathan alright? Yes, my lord. He's safe for now. We won at Gaibe. But... But... Tell me, what happened? All the Philistines have joined forces, and they're planning to attack again. Huh? They might attack any time now. We must stay here any longer, my lord. The Philistines will attack our children. Hmm. There is no time to waste, my lord. We must act quickly. Bring the offerings for the sacrifice. I will do the sacrifice myself. Get them quick! Yes, my lord. Saul's son Jonathan was stuck in Gaibe with Philistines waiting to attack his army. Saul wanted to raise there as quickly possible, so he decided to start offering the sacrifice himself. Huh? Is he offering the sacrifice? Samuel raised the temple while Saul was offering the sacrifice and he got very, very angry. Stop it! Huh? Stop it, I said! What are you trying to do? I... I... Are you trying to snatch the priesthood also? What right do you have to offer the sacrifice? I'm sorry, Master. I was waiting for you for so many days. And I just got the news that my son Jonathan is in trouble. The Philistines can attack Gaibe anytime. So, 
You thought you could offer the sacrifice yourself. You couldn't wait for me? I'm truly sorry. But if we delayed any longer, my son might get killed. Huh? You and your soldiers? Did you forget that it is God who leads Israel in war? Master, please do not misunderstand me. I offer the sacrifice to implore God's help. Don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? What obedience are you talking about? Is it my fault that you are late? What? No arrogance too? God is going to take away your kingship. King! King! What is it? Many of our soldiers are deserting us. What? But why? They think that you will not be able to leave them. Huh? You can do whatever you want. I am leaving. Why are you punishing me, master? You know what your mistake was. You did not wait. You are not obedient. Master, please. Don't touch me. God has chosen another one to be the king. Master, please forgive me. Please. Master, forgive me. Samuel was very depressed with what had happened at the temple. He couldn't stop thinking about it at all. What wrong did I do? I have loved and respected Samuel more than my father. Why is he being so cruel to me? How could I have waited any longer when my son's life was in danger? Am I thinking this way because I do not trust in God? Did I offend him by offering the sacrifice? Saul defeated the Philistines in Gaibe and saved Jonathan. But Saul became victim to a maniac depression. He could never get over to what had happened at the temple of Gilgal. Master, I have brought you the wine you asked. Hmm. What is this? It tastes like blood. Master, this is the best wine in all of Israel. How dare you call me your master? I am Saul and I am looking for father's donkey. Donkey? I'm... I'm sorry, master. Where are my donkeys? I have been looking them for so long. What is he talking about? I don't know, but something is seriously wrong. I think he is possessed by a ghost. Yes, he could be possessed. It is neither ghost nor devil. It's his own fear. Don't you remember? It started in Gilgal when he broke up with Prophet Samuel. Ah, yes. He has been like this for so long now. I hope he gets back to his senses soon. Huh? Who is this? Samuel, it's you. Stop strangling me. I'm going to kill you. Ah! <sighs> what just happened? It was just a dream. <sighs> Saul's trouble increased every day. The people around him brought a musician thinking that music will comfort him. And they invited David, a great musician, to comfort Saul. But this musician, David, went on to become the next king of Israel. Wow! Did he really go crazy, father? Yes, Lucy. Saul's mind was troubled with what had happened and he could never recover from it. Did his son die in the battle, father? No, he didn't. Saul's son Jonathan survived and he became a great friend of David. Father, was Saul really a bad person? Hmm, no my dear. In fact, Saul more or less had a preparatory role. Like John the Baptist. John the Baptist had made way for Jesus. And in the same way, 
Saul prepared the way for David. Hmm, I think his breakup with Samuel changed him as a person. You are correct. When Samuel left him, his spirits were crushed and he fell victim to depression and jealousy. He could no longer distinguish between friends and foes and he ended up killing many innocent people. So, shall I start with my questions then? Who can tell me which tribe Saul belonged to? Me, me. <laughs> yes, Matthew. Saul belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. Correct, Matthew. Why did Israelites demand a king? Israelites wanted an army to defend themselves and they demanded a king so that he can command the army. And who were the enemies of Israel? The Philistines, father. Good. Now who appointed Saul as the king of Israel? It was prophet Samuel. Correct. And what was Saul's profession before he became a king? He was a farmer. And what was his father's name? Mm, his father's name was Kish. Good, Matthew. Now who can tell me why Samuel got angry with Saul? Saul was waiting for Samuel at Gilgal to offer a sacrifice. But while waiting, he got the news that his son was about to be attacked by the Philistines. So in order to save his son, he had to reach there quickly. And he decided to offer the sacrifice himself without waiting for Samuel. And when Samuel saw Saul offering the sacrifice, he got really angry. Samuel also told him that another person was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. This troubled Saul's mind for a long time and he fell into a depression. <laughs> Very good both of you. So that's it children. We'll meet again tomorrow then. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David tomorrow? Hmm. Before I tell you the story of King David, I'll tell you the story of David, the shepherd. Is he the one who defeated the giant Goliath, father? Yes, Lucy. David killed a giant named Goliath and defeated the Philistine army. Wow, it's going to be wonderful. We will meet tomorrow at the same time. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.